Okay, we're back. This is The Cube. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. And this is SiliconAngle.com's continuous coverage of knowledge, ServiceNow's big user conference. And we're here with Michael Glenn. Michael's the director of architecture at Agripor, which is a multi-billion dollar uh, dairy farmer cooperative. Michael, welcome to The Cube. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, so we're here at the uh, the big conference. Uh, do you, now this, this is uh, not your first uh, knowledge, I take it? Or? It is my first knowledge, actually. It is, okay, actually, so yeah. it is. That's yeah. cool, so what do you think? Uh, extraordinary so far. I'm pleased to see the number of different sessions that we can go to, the lab sessions, very interesting and uh, very informative. So, so I'm curious, what, um, what got you here this year? Uh, how, well, how long have you been a ServiceNow customer? We've been a ServiceNow customer for two years now. Okay. And basically, uh, we started off with the typical uh, modules that everybody implements, configuration change, incident problem, et cetera. And we're looking at where our next steps are. So looking mostly at project management and things like that. So you're here trying to f squint through all that stuff and learn from your peers. Get, get more ideas and uh, see what our next steps are going to be. So let's start with Agafor. Uh, it's kind of an interesting you know, organization. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell us about it and uh, tell us more about your role there. So Agafor is a cooperative owned by about 3,800 dairy farmers in uh, basically in Quebec. A recent merger with some in the Atlantic provinces, so it's a growing uh, business. Uh, basically, we're spread uh, throughout Canada and uh, north the northeastern uh, United States. About 25 plants, uh, 5,500 uh, employees, and we transform uh, something like 3.2 billion liters of milk a year, and generate about 3.7 billion in revenue. So, talk talk a little bit more about your your business and what's changing in your business. What's what's driving your business? Yeah, well, like I, like I mentioned, we're uh, constantly expanding. A uh, new CEO arrived uh, last year, which uh, generated a lot of uh, new strategic decisions, uh, mergers of a couple of our divisions, uh, and uh, the most notable uh, change for uh, on our side was a merge of our three IT departments, which were totally separate before, merged into one corporate uh, IT. And so we've been leveraging a lot of stuff in service now to help manage that kind of uh, change. So the, the industry that you serve is, is obviously a staple of you know, most homes, but there's more competition, right? You've got competition from you know, soy products and, and rice products. How is that changing your business? Well, uh, we were, uh, there's not that much space, if you want, to, to go in and grab new markets, so it's a lot of development of new products. Uh, value-added products in the, the, the dairy part and on the, the cheese side uh, also. So, uh, and it's, you know, it's a little bit uh, communicating vases in there. You grab a little bit of market share from one and it just moves, but you know, overall it's, uh, it's the, same, uh, the same amount of, uh, same amount of, consumption. of, of consumption, yeah. So, so, so as good, I was going to say, on, on the cooperative side, so that, that's got to be a unique challenge in terms of not just distributed employees, but they're not really employees. They're, well, the I owners, the owners, the owners, the owners are basically limited to being. Uh, they have to be dairy farmers. Right. So that that uh, is basically the pool of, of people who uh, who own the company. In terms of employees, the employees can be uh, from any uh, any any type of walk of life. But yeah. what's the what's kind of the IT connection with all these distributed farms and and points of contact and how does that all work? Because that uh, you know, well, sounds very different than kind of your traditional yeah. just a field office. Well, in, interestingly, uh, in, in Canada, the, the milk that our uh, owners produce doesn't necessarily come to our cooperative. In Canada, it's, it's regulated by the government, and basically all milk is distributed to different companies which aren't necessarily ours based on uh, their, their needs. So the actual milk that's produced by our owners does not necessarily come to us. So that's a little bit uh, particular, which is different, uh, a little bit different like the, than in the States. But our, our link to, uh, from an IT po point of view, is mostly with the actual uh, employees of the plants and the salespeople who uh, transform the milk that is produced by the, by the farmers and who, uh, who sell it. Okay. So was the catalyst for ServiceNow the, the consolidation of your IT operations? Or? No, the catalyst actually was we had uh, quite a few um, applications built in-house on Lotus Notes, which uh, we'd been working with for uh, at least 12 years. And uh, time goes on, uh, more difficult to find Lotus Notes developers. So we started moving to uh, Exchange for our email, to SharePoint for document management. And we had to do something with all of our in-house applications, which were basically help desk. We had the inventory in there, we had some change management, which thankfully we had already developed uh, using ITIL as our, as our, our guidelines. So um, moving away from that to, to something else was pretty uh, straightforward. 
And what we liked uh, especially about ServiceNow is actually there are a lot of things that I find similar in ServiceNow uh, than Lotus Notes. I see it more as a development platform, just like Lo Notes is a development platform. ServiceNow is also a development platform, which comes with a bunch of stuff already uh, built in. So we really like that aspect of it, of being able to, uh, to configure it and to modify it to, to suit our needs. I remember when IBM bought Lotus Notes. I remember talking to mm -hmm. some IBM executives about that platform mm -hmm. nature, and they actually, mm -hmm. they actually saw that vision yeah. through. The problem is it's a yeah. product that was developed a, a long, long time ago, yeah. and it's, it really doesn't serve your, your needs as a, as a CMDB <laughs> that well. Yeah, well, I mean, compared to what we saw, we've seen in the demonstrations uh, over the past few days of the application development on, on your service now, I mean, there's no comparison with the ease with which you can develop something. You don't need to be a programmer, really. You just need to configure things is what it comes down to. So one of the things that we've been trying to figure out, Michael, is how people justify bringing in ServiceNow because it's, it's so obvious, the benefits, but it's, if, if, if it's not necessarily the easiest sale to a CFO. No, it's a hard sell because uh, you know, when we started looking at it, so this is like two years, two years or so ago, we were looking at the big players in the ITSM type suite uh, markets and actually, ServiceNow was a footnote to our presentation. We, we, were, you know, we were in the six figures, obviously, for some of the implementing some of these suites, and we had this footnote that said, by the way, uh, there's software as a service that exists for this. And basically, our CFO saw the footnote, and he said, no, I'd, like to, <laughs> I'd like to know more about that. And so basically, ServiceNow was our first foray into uh, software a as a service, and going more to a constant cost, operating cost uh, model, rather than a large capital expense uh, type, uh, type uh, upgrade, which you have to go and repeat five or six years down the line whenever you decide to go to another version. Okay, so that move to a variable expense obviously is going to appeal mm -hmm. to a lot of CFOs. Uh, yeah, it could, definitely. And, and at the same time, there's an expense related to other processes that you got to develop, or you got to tear down old processes. Yeah. Did, did, did you have to do a business case to, to bring it in, or was it just sort of, hey, we want to go into this SaaS model? Well, I'd say the business case, uh, the, SaaS, the SaaS model, if we looked at it over a period of five or 10 years, just again with the repeated large capex, it, it was you know even Steven, if you want if you want to uh, look at it that way, and so the. Other big thing that really uh, weighed in with that was that ServiceNow comes with everything. You have all the applications. You don't have to buy another uh, thing if I want to do, uh, I don't know, uh, change management, another module for, uh, for, for whatever. Plus, there's all the other applications that are outside of the basic uh, ITIL, the project management part, the finance management. So we just said, well look, you know, you're getting a lot more bang for your buck here. Yeah, so Even if you don't you know, need it right now, you know you've got it and you can do it whenever you want. But I could still see a lot of CFOs saying, well we don't really need it right now, so don't spend the money. But, uh, yeah. but, but you had a CFO that was forward thinking yeah. in terms of, hey, we want to move to this variable expense exactly. model and this is a logical place to do it. Definitely. So what's been the business impact of bringing in ServiceNow? I think the, um, the, the most impact that we had, I think is what I was mentioning at the beginning, we, had, we were merging three IT departments into one and it's mostly it's the facility with which we've been able to integrate the IT uh, staff from the other departments and to uh, integrate processes and especially on the CMDB side, being able to bring in the, uh, the, uh, the data from the other, uh, the other uh, divisions. So in thinking about, so where are you at with the CMDB? Have you talk about that journey. Yeah, well the CMDB, uh, basically when we had started looking at the, the different modules that we could put in place, we, you know, we, we we're working with a consulting uh, group, and you know, in discussion, it was okay. We go with incident, then we go with change and problem and uh, configuration management. And when we started looking at incident management and categorizing incidents and things like that, we started saying, well, most of this information that we're trying to use to categorize is information that I have in the CMDB. It's either hardware or it's this type, this software, or, uh, or or this title or this uh, device or whatever. So we said, let's start looking at the configuration management first, then. If we want to base everything on that, let's structure it properly and, uh, and, and use that as a, uh, leverage the information that's there for the other processes. So that's where you started. You started so focusing we started on with the CMDB the, yeah, and getting that built. Exactly, yeah. And we used uh, both a bottom, uh, bottom up and a top down approach. Our bottom up approach was basically going from uh, our infrastructure, so our different locations, data centers, uh, servers that are in there and what software is running on that. And our top down approach was basically going from 
a, a business component model. So basically a business component model describes absolutely all of the business processes for our particular industry. So for example, our dairy, our dairy industry. And so that was basically the top part of our CMDB, the logical part if you want. And then we just wor worked up uh, from there to describe which uh, services uh, are used by those different processes, which applications belong to those services, et cetera. So it gives us an end-to-end -end, uh, view of all of the components straight up to the business process. So the top-down gave you the connection to the business. Exactly. And that's where value's flowing. Yeah, and uh, you know, I think one of the important things about putting the entire um, uh, list of pro business processes, even if we don't serve them in IT, is the strategic part of it. When you're doing strategic planning, you want to know which areas of the business aren't well served by IT, or which ones are over served by IT. So by having absolutely 100% of all the processes that you can have, you get that, that kind of vision in there. I love this story. Now, were there organizational issues with regard to getting people to give up those processes and put them into the CMPD? <laughs> well, who owns that now? How does well, that all work? essentially, the, the model itself, the business component model, was, uh, is, is static. So we didn't have to deal with uh, do you agree that this is a business process or not? Right, okay. it, it already existed, so yep. you know, it, was, it was straight like that. Where we got, uh, had a lot more work to do was basically with the uh, application side or the development side of IT, which weren't really involved in our uh, ITSM tools in terms of incident management and stuff like that, but we had to bring them on board when we wanted to get the application part of it and linking the applications to the business processes, et cetera. And they uh, came on board pretty quickly with that and actually uh, it brought them into also incident management and change management. So now we, we really have excellent collaboration, if you want, between uh, the two, if you want, uh, dualities of IT, the tech part and the, uh, the development I part. I love this story. So you've yeah. basically got your IT infrastructure connected to the applications with a logical view to business processes, yep. and as I was saying, value flows you know, right to the business, yep. and you can yep. essentially now track that. That's right, so that's, you know, that's about where we're at right now. Right now we've got a lot of information in there, and now we have to develop, if you want, the tools yep. to, to really, uh, to really uh, use that information. Yeah, it just doesn't come out, I understand that. That's you, it. You've got some, yeah. some work to do there. there yeah. are some, we saw some tools around the, the exhibitor yeah. uh, hall uh, mm -hmm. recently that, that start touching upon some exactly. of those. Of course, yeah. you can develop your own. Are you using, do you, do you envision using things like App Creator to develop some of your own apps? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I don't have any specific examples right now, because like I mentioned, we just reorged, so our, dev our development team is also uh, reorging, so we've got to, once we've identified the resources in, the, in that group, we'll, uh, we'll look where we're going with that. All right, so uh, we're, we're out of time, but uh, Michael, I wonder if you could just share with the audience, you've been through this now, you've been around 24 months going through this, yeah. so you've got quite a bit of experience, you've sunk your teeth into whole the ServiceNow you know, product, yeah. but more importantly, the, the internal organizational issues around that. What yeah. advice would you give to your fellow practitioners that are considering you know, moving in this direction? Well, I mean, what's been win a winning thing for us, I think, is what we were just mentioning, the configuration management aspect. If you have the opportunity to take the time and structure that in order to really encompass IT, if you want, from the business processes all the way down to the infrastructure, I think that's a good way to, to go. If you start by structuring that and organizing that, and you base everything on that, uh, you're going to have a, a really good uh, view of what you're doing. Michael Glenn, very great. practical advice. Great really stuff. appreciate you coming mm -hmm. on and telling us the Agapore story Pleasure. and uh, how you're using ServiceNow. Great. All right, keep it right there, we'll be right back. Uh, Petra Zilstra is here, the CIO of KPN, and we're going to un unpack what she's doing with ServiceNow. We'll be right back, this is theCUBE. <laughs>